Hey everybody, welcome to Dystonia Tea and Journey Connection. This is week four where we come on and speak to Dr. Jeffrey Brown to speak about how dystonia for a lot of people can be connected to their TMJs and the jaw area. Um, this week we're actually going to be speaking a little bit more about the cranial bones and we're going to be going into the C1 and C2. If you don't know me, my name is Michelle McManus. I'm actually one of the admins on this group, Facebook group, Dystonia TMJ and the Connection. Now these videos are also going to be going out on YouTube. Now I can confirm to people, because I've had a few people asking me, if you comment on these pitch on these videos on this group they will not be shown on YouTube the comments the reason why we're putting them on YouTube is so people can actually spread awareness and share with family and friends okay so like I said this week we're going to be speaking a little bit more about the cranial bones and a little bit about the C1 and C2 so I'm just waiting for Dr. Jeffrey Brown to come on and then he'll be able to take over and go into that a little bit. So when you come on, please say hello to us. Please let us know where you're watching from as well. Love to see you. Um, let us know how you are. Um, and also, if there's anything that you feel like we can discuss and uh, what would be good to um, go through on these weekly chats, let us know as well. I know a lot of you have been sending messages in. Um, questions into me so we're going to be going through those hopefully maybe next week i'm going to put them all together and we will have a question and answer session with dr jeffrey brown as well to answer as many questions as we can and the idea of these uh, videos is just to spread awareness and to get that out there to people so let's see if i can get dr jeffrey brown on now um okay Bear me for a moment. Okay, so the invite's been sent. Dr. Jeffrey Brown, if you can see this video, excellent. I can see you, but you haven't got a add button next to you. Now, lucky enough on YouTube, we can actually... There's no problem, you've learnt that. Okay, he's actually been added now, excellent. No, no, no. Hi, Michelle. Hello, how are you? Good morning. I know, I'm looking at you. I know, uh, we'll have to figure this out eventually. I think we do. First on the list. So again, to put this down, Dr. Jessica, I do not want to speak too much on these videos. I know it can be quite uh, frustrating for people to watch them. And so, as I was explaining to people on here, um, if we could go into a little bit more about the cranial bones, so we know that we, um, the TMJs, if they are compressing on certain nerves, they could be sending signals down to the body, up to the brain, and this is where a lot of people are getting their symptoms, including the, the, the pawing and the bobbling of the head and symptoms of the stone. If you know that, but I'd like to go a little bit more into the cranial bones, how that's related um, to a lot of people with TMJ with dystonia and obviously connected to the TMJ, the cranial bones. And also a little bit about the C1 and C2, please. Okay. Um, when I palpate the cranial bones in the patient, one of the things I look for is the sphenoid bone. If you put your fingers right about there, you can feel like a little divot or an indent. And in almost every new patient that I meet, these are way out of alignment. And they're, they tend to be like that. So you can kind of see when, when the person takes off their glasses, I say, hey, look at my glasses. See the, uh, the change there? That tells you the sphenoid bone is most likely out of place. Then you also look at the sclera, the white of their eyes. And if the sclera is out of place a good bit too, they're not balanced on both sides, then you know you have a cranial bone distortion, most likely. So that's one of the things I like to palpate. The other is the mastoid bone right behind the ears, little pointy bones. You can always feel them when you palpate through here. If they're not level, not even, then more than likely the sockets for the jaw bones are like that as well. So then we know that the condyles are like this. And I always tell our patients, think front end alignment on your car. So if the wheels are like this, then that means the tires will flop around unevenly, i.e. the discs in the jaw joints are going to jump around and flop around. 
One of the things I order on my MRI is condylar inclination angulation. So I'm looking at, I want to know if my two condyles are level like this, or is one rotated like this relative to the other? That's a big problem there, Michelle, if it is, because this job only is tracking like this. This one is trying to track like this. And that will throw the disc position off quite a bit too. And again, pinching nerves and all that. So as we palpate around, you get a feel for the skull. Sometimes I'll actually put the person back in my chair or on the table, hold the skull, and you've been through this obviously, but they hold the skull, you feel the occiput, which is the bone back here. And it's really important to know, what is that occiput doing? Because that occiput is where the splenius capitis ties in to the back of the, the neck region. Again, down to C2, C1, C2. So when we're looking at x-rays, if we discover that C1 and C2 are touching, then we know there's a big old problem with the nerves coming out the spinal column. There should be six millimeters between C1 and C2 and C1 and the occiput bone. That's the normal spacing that should be there. If it's a compressed spacing, you're going to have all sorts of nerve pinching through the spinal column. And that always causes lots of problems with our dystonia, friends. I also like to look at C2. C2, when you look at it on an x-ray from a lateral view, should look like that. Inevitably, most of the time I see this, meaning this, the processes of C2 are rotated. And again, nerve touching. So I want to see that. I hope that came through okay. Um, actually, here's the model. Okay. This is C2. And it's two little pieces on the spinous process. So when you look at it from a side view, all you see is one. Most of the patients I meet, you see that when you see the two different pieces. And then we know there's a rotation. So what do you do about that? Well, cranial osteopath, cranial stable therapy, uh, osteopathy, physical therapy. Working with somebody who knows how to do these things is very, very important. As you well know, Michelle, you've been through quite a bit yourself. You've learned a lot over the years. I have, yes, yes. And I, I you know, I've come on these videos and I, I assume that people realize that I've got dystonia myself, but obviously not, you know, not everybody's going to realize that. I was actually diagnosed myself in 2012 uh, with dystonia and I was severe. I mean, I was having uh, Botox every 10 weeks um, instead of the normal 12 weeks because I was so bad. I needed help to walk, I needed help to eat, I needed help to bath, so I know exactly exactly what it feels like and this is why I like, you know, I come on and try and spread awareness of what I can to help um, others as well. And I'm still going through treatment, so, you know, it's still, it's still a part of my journey for sure. It's, it's an awful thing. Uh, we do have some, some of our patients use Botox and they're usually the older patients who have been through a lot of damage, and you know, bluntly, they're damaged. Um, and unfortunately, I see too many of those. Every day of the week, I meet pre-dystonia patients, are what I refer to them as. I don't call them dystonia patients, but inevitably, let me see if I get my camera right here. Uh, my holder broke, so I'm trying to sit this on top of a pen holder. Anyway, I meet people every day, and I see this, and I see this. And that's their posing position. So I try to come straight like this, their posture, back up where it should be. So I will frequently tell our patients, please work on posture, head position, try to get your, your cranium sitting on the cervical spine straighter. And that's actually going to improve breathing. It'll help reposition things. But frequently, with severe dystonia, you need a, a lower galb appliance, upper alpha appliance, the normal thing, to re the alpha realign the cranium, because that's so important. Otherwise, you will tip off like this again. And if you look at people in general, most everybody is this way, that way, all of us. And I tell this to our patients, and, and I jokingly tell them, okay, you're gonna go to work now, and you're gonna put everybody in front of you and just look at their skulls. and it works very well to make them more aware. So yeah, we have to pay attention to cervical strains, cranial strains. 
Also, looking at the tongue is very important too. If you're tongue tied, you need to be aware of that. I guess yesterday alone, I had two or three new ones in. They're very tongue tied. They didn't know it, and some of them had speech issues. So yeah, imagine if your tongue was way back, and one's a diplomat. So they um, they're trying to talk, but the tongue cannot get up here to the roof or come forward enough to enunciate the words properly. So these are part part of it too. So there's a lot of factors to look at with dystonia and movement disorders in general. And lest we forget, the MRI, I know in England, they don't do much with that, but I can tell you that it's very, very important, I think, in the diagnosis. I have an MRI done. Yeah, and um, I also had uh, an MRI done with the NHS, and I've got different results because they didn't see. They saw, but I didn't see it as being an issue for everyday living and being connected to the area, even though the actual joints were out of place and stuff like that. But, but anyway, <laughs> that's another story, Dr. Jeffrey Brown, isn't it, really? Another story. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, the way modern day life, the way we are, the way we're using computers, the way we're eating, you know, you know sort of being on sitting on the table, and all these little things that myself as well that the human race are doing now all plays an impact like you say on the position and how we hold our head and how we hold our body um i know where i've been told i don't know if you agree please do tell me if you don't but i've been told that just a little chin tuck as you're standing slightly tucking the chin slightly and that will give a better position of your head and Another example, um, I know we're trying to keep these videos short, but another example, my dad, um, not so much now, but he always used to walk with his hands behind his back. I don't know if that was back in the time, <laughs> make it sound very old. Back in the day, that's how men would walk, but always back, so he had his shoulders back, head high, and that's how he always walked. He's, uh, yeah, he's in his 70s, and we actually done an eight-mile walk together yesterday, so, yeah. He's done something right, definitely, the way he was brought up and the food he ate and things like that, so it all plays a part. That's a good point too, Michelle. We ask of our patients, walk every day. I don't care about weightlifting, I don't care about the machines, but walk every day and imagine there's a string on top of your head doing this. And as you get taller, you breathe better and better, the chest comes out, Use diaphragm, diaphragmatic breathing. Breathe through the diaphragm and always pull out the core, the, the, the gut region. Pull that core in for better posture. That will help line up the cervical spine and get these moving a little bit better. And I just think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Every day we tell our patients, just do this. Thank you very much. Thank you and certain things you can do to help that with the breathing and posture, maybe we'll do that next week, if that's okay with you. And hopefully we'll have had the sound done by then as well, which is dreadful. <laughs> but we still hope that the information has gone out to you guys and it's going to help you in some way, because I'm sure every little information, Dr Brown or anybody can do is well appreciated. So thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Dr Brown. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Cheers. Have a yeah. Happy Friday. You have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you everybody for watching. Bye bye for now.